dwell. today as we prepare to worship. Go ahead and push the like, love, and share button as we prepare to go to God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this day that you have made and that you invited us to be a part of your day, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you have that you woke us up to be in your presence, Lord God. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy and your unfailing love. Lord God, we pray and ask that you will rain on us, Lord God, that you will pour a refreshing upon us, Lord God, as we move into this new season of spring. Lord God, we pray that you open doors, Lord God, and just do what you do. As we prepare for this service, Lord God, I pray and ask that you will just touch our hearts, minds, spirit, and souls to receive your word, Lord God, to be open to your word, Lord God, and to praise, bless, and honor you because you are so worthy. So, Lord God, we worship you, we praise you, and we give you all the glory. This is our prayer in your son's Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning. Listen, we honor God this morning. We remember God, our creator, this morning. Come on, the one who is great and greatly to be praised. We come before his throne this morning ready to worship him. Listen, God was not silent when he, when he sent his only begotten son to die for our sins. So this morning we say we will not be silent. And here is our worship. We worship you, God. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, we worship you and honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. You, Lord, you are worthy. Worship you for me, for all the things you've done for me, and no one can worship you for me. Here's my worship, all of my worship. Receive my worship, all of my worship. Here's my worship, all of my worship. Receive my worship, all of my worship. Come on, say you, Lord. Come on, you are worthy. Worthy. Come on, say, and no one can worship you. And no one can worship you for me. Come on, just go back down memory lane and think about it. For all the things all that you've done. things you've done for me. I don't know about you, but that's why I say no one can worship you for me. No Come on, let's go. Worship you for oh. me. Here's my worship, say Here's my worship Come on, all of my All of my worship Come on, tell them to receive it this morning Receive my worship Say all of my All of my worship Come on, 
here's my worship. Sing all of my, all my worship, Lord. Father, receive my worship today. Sing all of my, all of my worship. Say you, Lord. Go. You are worthy. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you as long as I am breathing. I will always worship. Saying, I will not be silent. Here's my worship. I always say, Worship you. Come on, say, As long as I am breathing, as long as I am breathing, I will always. I'll praise you, I'll worship you, I'll always, always, always. Come on, real big, say, here's my worship. Say, here's my worship. Yeah. 
and welcome again to David Chapel's worship experience. Thank you for allowing us to come into whatever space you're in now, home or elsewhere. We thank you for allowing us to share the joy of Jesus in this moment. Prepare now to worship with us even more. I'm going to be preaching from Acts chapter 3. Read for yourself verses 9 through 19 and then we'll join in. Let us know that you're here with us, Facebook uh, and YouTube put in on comments whatever is coming to your heart as you go through the worship experience come on now david chapel and others who are worshiping with us you are welcome welcome here in this place at david chapel at david chapel where you see where you see Here in this place at David Chapel, where you see, where you see a smiling face. Come, let us fellowship in unity as we give praise to the King. Love to share our hearts, love to share our hearts with the It's now time for tithes and offering as we worship God in our giving. As 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7 reminds us, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. As we pause to offer our gift, we have four ways to give right now or at any time during the week. One, you may drop off your giving at our mail slot located on the MLK side of our church. Two, text DCMBC to 77977 from your phone. Three, download the PushPay app and search for David Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. And four, you may mail in your giving to our church address 2211 East Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, Austin, Texas, 78702. When we give, our offering helps meet the needs of the community 
aids in providing benevolence and invests in the spiritual development of our children and youth. Our giving honors God and enables us to further our mission as a church with a heart for the community. Thank you and God bless. You're my life, Lord Jesus. You're my life, Lord Jesus. You're everything to me. You're the sweetest song I sing. You are my Let's say it together. You're my life. You're my life, Lord Jesus. Come on, affirm her. You're my life, Lord Jesus. Tell him, you're everything to me. You're everything to me. You're the sweetest song. You're the sweetest song I sing. You are my end. You're everything to me. You're everything to me. The sweetest, You're the sweetest song I sing. You are. You are my everything. Yes, you are, God. You are more than enough for me. Hey. Next part says this. My whole. In you, I live and have my being, my hope, my hope. and my song, my song, my strength, my strength, and my shield. you want and everything that you need. All I want is Come on, lift this up to him. Jesus. Nothing in this world. Nothing in this world. Compared to what he's worth. Compared to what your word. You are, you are my everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything, yeah. 
said, my home, said, my home, and my son, my, son, my, strength, my strength, and my peace. My Chapter 3, verses 9 through 19. Hopefully, 
you have already read those verses for yourself. I want to urge you, us, to turn to God and get refreshed. Turn to God and get refreshed. One afternoon, at the time of prayer, Peter and John encountered a man whose life had been dried up, having been paralyzed from birth for over 40 years. And that man was carried daily to the temple gate called Beautiful by people whose lives were spiritually dry and paralyzed so that he could beg from those going into the temple courts. Asking for money, Peter said to the man that he did not have any, but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, at the beautiful gate, Peter took him by the right hand helped him up and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and he began to walk. Then he, the walking man, went with them into the temple courts walking and jumping and praising God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Peter helped the man's dried up life become beautiful, become flourishing and stable. But remember now, the man asked only for money that he believed would refresh his life for the time being. Sometimes, my friends, you and I can ask for the wrong things. But this was his day for refreshment. The dried up and paralyzed man did not realize that when he reached out to Peter and John that he was turning to the miracle working God. One of my professors, my, uh, Brian Harbour, says that human need plus Christian compassion, plus God's power, equals miraculous change in human life. Human need, Christian compassion, seeing the need, plus God's power, equals miraculous change in human life. And there were others there. The dried up and paralyzed people who saw all of this and they were impacted as well. And as Peter was speaking with them, he took the moment to remind them that they had treated Jesus of Nazareth badly. He had urged those who were in the crowd 
watching that miracle working God use Peter and he said to them who were spiritually dry repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out so that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Repentance. Turning from our sins and turning to God brings God's forgiveness when we of us violating his will, his way, and his word. Repentance brings refreshment, renewal, and comfort, and release, and deliverance, and revival, and strength through God's presence. Repentance refreshes our own relationship with God. Repentance renews us. Repentance refreshes our soul. Repentance heals our wounds. Repentance brings hope and repentance gives us good news. I read a statement once where it was said that we must know that where the dry desert ends, green grass grows. Where is the dry desert in your life? Do you see at the edge of that the green, the refreshment that God wants you to have? You see, this paralyzed man's desert ended when he received God's transforming power. This also applies to us, my friends. What about you right now? Are you spiritually dry? Are you in a season where you need some refreshment? Are you spiritually dry, whether it's spiritual or just in life where you feel as if you're not getting the flow in your life that you need? Today I want to tell you, in the name of Jesus Christ, get refreshed. I want to say to you in the words of Sarah being breath nap, right now, expect to have hope rekindled in your life because the dry seasons in life do not last and the spring rains will come again. My brothers and sisters, some questions for you. Do you want refreshment? If, if you want that today, turn to God's amazing, transforming power. When all the people, the record says in our text, when all the people saw the man walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And when they saw him now in this transformed state and condition, the record says that they were filled with wonder filled with amazement at what had happened to him. Have you ever had that experience? Looking at someone else, you may not have seen them in years, but somehow over the years what you saw now was far different and better than what you remember about them. And you looked at them, you engaged with them, you saw them, and you were amazed at what had happened. You see, these people who saw God's transforming power 
had wonder. They were astonished at what they saw. They were amazed. They marveled at what they saw. And I need to tell you today, oh dried up one, God is available to touch your need amazingly. Did you hear me? It's one thing to have a need touched. But when you can get that need touched amazingly, and the amazing touch is by God, others will see the wonder of what God has done. Have you ever experienced that in your life? Do, do you experience God's power in your life where others are amazed at what they see happening with you? Do you see that in others where you are amazed? You want refreshment? Turn to God's amazing, transforming power. I'm going to ask you again. Do you want refreshment? Turn to God's attractive, transforming power. The record goes on to say, while the man held on to Peter and John, he held on to those who had been the vehicles of God's transforming power. He held on to them and it says and again all the people were astonished and the people came running to Peter and John in the place called Solomon's Colonnade and when Peter saw the astonished people running to him he said to them hold up 21st century translation. Well, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at me, at us, as if it was our own power of godliness that made this paralyzed man walk? You see, this is why I struggle with those who are gifted, who somehow believe that they ought to be celebrated because of the gift that God has given them. And when see people see in those who are gifted powerful expressions coming out of them, they must ask the same question that Peter asked. Why are you so amazed at me? It was not me. It was God working through me. You see, the people were spellbound not on the healed man, but on the miracle working agents of God. You see, each of us has been given at least one manifestation of the Spirit, at least one gift, and some of us have been given multi multiple gifts. But it is not for us to expect people to acclaim us because it comes from God. We are the agents. And when it seems as if God has intervened in some miraculous way through his people, they ought to be able to say, hold up. Thank you for the compliment. But they don't buy in to that they are all that. You see, here they were. They were like Marvel heroes. They, 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 they were like Marvel heroes because the, the original word says that the people marveled at what God had done. What about you? Do you marvel at what God does in your life also? Do you recognize the hand of God on the lives of others? Do you uh, see 
that God places his hands on some and they seem as if they have power in and of themselves, but it's the submission of what they have to God's guidance. You see, God's attractive, transforming, healing power attracts attention. But we must give God the credit. Remember, Jesus said, if I am lifted up from the earth, I, Jesus, will draw all people to myself. It's all right to be drawn to God's awesome power. It's all right to want to be in the presence of those that God uses in powerful ways, but never get so caught up where your attraction is about them. It should be about God. Peter looks at those who were there watching all of that, and he's saying, to them, he says, y'all are surprised, y'all are, you are marveling, you are astonished at what God has done through me to heal this man. He says, but I gotta tell you something else. You are the same ones who treated this one wrong. You see, Peter says, here's a word we have to keep in mind, Peter says, in effect, that they had excusable ignorance. He says, I know that the reason you all treated him that way was not deliberate. That you were just ignorant. And it's excusable. It was ignorant because you are the ones who rejected him. You are the ones who despised him. You are the ones who killed him. And listen, this one that gave me the power in order to heal the man, he's a source of of life but y'all rejected him y'all despised him y'all killed him and now you want to celebrate the power that comes from him you can turn to God's attractive transforming power because God still loves you, the rejectors, the despisers, the killers. God still loves you so much that you can still turn from your sins. I'm talking to somebody now. You, you've messed up. You've dishonored God. You've done some things. God is saying, but you still you still can get refreshed. You still can turn back to me. You fall short, but I'm still loving you because I so love the world, God says, that I gave my only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You want refreshment? Turn to God's aiding They say here that faith in Jesus' name is what healed the man that was standing before them. He says it is the faith that comes through believing in Jesus' name that has made the disabled man walk right in front of you. You see, Jesus was willing and is willing right now to aid you, to comfort you, to strengthen and keep you, to carry you through. All you have to do today is to trust the name of Jesus. God will then meet our limitations, whatever your limitations are. God will supply your need. Are you familiar with Henry Harry Houdini, the great escape artist who earned his fame by escaping handcuffs, prison cells, all manner of contraptions that were designed to confine him. He boasted on numerous occasions that no jail cell could hold him. He had never failed. He always escaped. Well, almost. Urban legend says that on one 
occasion, Houdini entered a cell as he usually did wearing his street clothes. The authorities shut the jail cell behind him and left him in the cell. Alone, he did what he had always done to get out of those places. He pulled a thin but strong piece of metal from his belt. He began working the lock, but this time the cell wouldn't open. The lock would not yield. Houdini worked fervently, applying his amazing knowledge of tools and locks and mechanisms to the task. And two hours later, Houdini gave up in frustration. The lock simply would not yield. The great Harry Houdini had failed. You know why? Do you know what went wrong? The guards had forgotten to lock the cell. And all Houdini needed to do was to push open the door. I see you. There you are with that thin wire you're trying to get out of some dried up situation. You're trying to get out. You're working too hard. Just turn to God and watch the door open. The only place the door had been locked was in Houdini's mind. Are you locked, my friend, today? I just say in this final word, come and gather right here in this moment, wherever you are, come and gather in God's presence. Come and gather in God's power. Open up your arms wide with your hands lifted up, with your open hearts. Welcome the Lord to come to abide with you. We need the Lord's spirit. I need to tell you, we need the Lord's spirit. That's the one that will get you out of your cell. We need the Lord's spirit. We can do nothing unless the Lord comes to us, for we are unworthy to even call on his name. But he says, you want refreshing? I'm ready to aid you. I'm ready to help you. We can do nothing without him. So I say, Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Don't let our coming to you be in vain. Oh Lord, we need your spirit. We need your spirit right now. We need your spirit right now. Fall down fresh on us. We need your spirit to unlock these chains. We need your spirit to get us out of this jail. Oh, I hear you right now breaking every chain. Don't, don't you hear? Be quiet. Don't you hear? The chains are falling down in the name of Jesus. Fall down, chain. Fall down, chain. Break it up, chain. Come on down and let the Lord free you today. Are you here? Are you here? You want to turn to God. Get refreshed. God has given you an opportunity right now. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be refreshed through being saved. Come on, my friends. God is waiting for you right now. He's waiting for you right now. I know you want to be refreshed. Stop trying to <laughs> unlock the cell. Stop trying to break the chains yourself. <laughs> Don't be like Houdini. But let the chains start falling. Accept him today. And if you want to be a part of our fellowship, our congregation, I welcome you right now to do that. I'd love to be your pastor. But make sure you're on the Lord's side. If you want us to pray for you, fill out that form. And we will do that. If you want it confidential, let us know that. And only those who share with me in the prayer ministry will see what you have given. Come on now. It's decision time. And feel the chains 
falling from your life. I'll be back with a word of prayer and benediction. God bless you. army that's rising up because your chains have been broken. Let me pray for you. Thank you, O oh God, for continuing to remind us <clears throat> your power that is available to each of us. It's transforming power. It's amazing power. And we want it all. We want you to give us everything that you can give to us to help us change, transform our lives so that we can live life to the fullest we want to be refreshed oh god we we know that there are those who live in states of dryness longer than others but whenever we come to that part, spot remind us that we can find refreshment in you thank you for jesus christ who is the source of life and we come praying that we will never be on that side of those who reject, who despise him. We pray, oh God, that in our lives we will honor him. And there's somebody right now needs to be urged and, and reminded that's what they need to do. There's somebody in this place who's already done that and need to be encouraged to keep on doing that. There's somebody here who's dealing with problems in their lives and problems in their bodies and situations and circumstances. There's somebody who still is finding hope and joy and celebration for what you have done. And we say thank you. Keep on God being a chain breaking God. Keep on God breaking us free. Keep on God releasing us for those things that hold us captive. Break those chains in the name of Jesus we pray and we say in the words of Peter, let us grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory now and forevermore. Go break those chains, Jesus.
break every chain to break to break every chain break every chain break every chain break every chain to break every break every break every break every break every chain break every chain to break every break every break every break every break every last time all to break every break every break every break every chain break every 